My vinegar versus rust video really blew up on YouTube lately. My thanks to everybody who commented and liked and subscribed. It really means a lot to me that you like my work, especially the sound and the video quality and all that. I work hard on these videos. For the record, if you like this fast forward kind of sound that was big in the vinegar versus rust video, you should check out Jimmy DeResta's channel. He's the king of that fast forwarded sound. There were a lot of questions and comments on the video. So I thought I'd respond to some of the more common ones in a follow-up. Question number one, why did you clear coat the tools? I clear coated them to prevent flash rust. There's a couple of different ways to deal with this, but anytime you do one of these rust removal processes, the metal is uh, vulnerable to rusting quickly if you don't do something to protect the bare metal after the fact. You could use WD-40, which is what uh, Monty D reported using that on some towing chains, uh, and he, he oiled them up after he vinegared the, the chains, and that's kept the rust off. From my research, you can either oil them or clear coat them. And if you oil them, then you're gonna have a tough time doing any clear coating after the fact. And I just wanted to do something that was gonna be easy and consistent and protect these tools. So I thought, well, I can always clear coat them and then oil them later if I actually end up using them. We all know that they're not really usable the way they are, and so actually clear coating makes a lot of sense if they're gonna end up as artwork or whatnot as one user suggested, which I still think is a good idea. Why didn't you include a photo of the original tools? At the time I couldn't find one, but I went back through my archives and I found a photo. You can see here that the tools are really dark with rust. And yes, that used to be a double-ended box wrench, not a pry bar. Do the files still work? The problem with the files is that there's not much for teeth left so clear coat or not the vinegar already kind of made the the files useless this file is the sharpest of the bunch and it does file my fingernails still works did the vinegar affect the metal strength can see with this file, it's probably one of the thinner ones of the bunch. It is very malleable at the end where the handle is. And it flexes a great deal in the main part of the file. But I think that's more to do with the material that it took off than with the vinegar actually changing the composition of the metal. What about magnetism? This is a wrench that didn't get vinegared. It's magnetic. And here's a wrench that did get the treatment and it's still magnetic. How did the bucket smell? This concoction looked disgusting. It did look like something out of Resident Evil 7 as a lot of people pointed out, but it smelled fine. It was no worse than regular vinegar. Uh, Diga asks, why hasn't the vinegar evaporated in all this time? I thought this was a great question. I had no clue. Gary Host replied, the water in this solution would evaporate first, concentrating the acetic acid, catalyzing the acetic reaction to the metal, then saturating the solution with Fe3+. The water content would still evaporate at some rate over months, but even when half sealed in colder places, the evaporation would be diminished. Makes sense to me. Did the vinegar attack the metal or just the rust? It definitely eroded the metal, but it was very slow in that regard. I do think that it was more of a cycle of rust removal and then re-rusting for most of the surfaces. For the tools that had the most erosion, that was probably because they were sunk in the muck at the bottom of the container, and that, that was just a pure rusty mud so that would have made things rust much faster down there. The Garage Journal forums has some great information on this. Things like, will it affect paint? What will it affect this type of finish? I'll include a link in the description if you have any other questions about how vinegar will affect you, the thing that you want to de-rust, I would start there and go search and see what you can find.
What about other rust removal methods like coke, molasses, sandblasting, electrolysis, or RR183? Tim reported using that to great effect. There are a lot of methods for removing rust. All of them have pros and cons. The, the mechanical methods such as Scotch-Brite pads and sandblasting and wire wheels, those all are pretty quick. It's just that you have to spend a lot of time working on them, depending on how rusty your tools are. It's a, kind of a one-to-one -one thing. And there's also the chance that you could damage the metal if you weren't careful, which can also happen with vinegar, I suppose. I think those work great but I'm a bigger fan of the passive options because you can set it and forget it to a certain degree. Electrolysis is along the same lines and it might work faster. The problem with that is that you've got hydrogen gas that comes out of the mixture as the process works and that can be explosive. And you've got a battery charger that you have to keep an eye on to some degree it's probably going to be fine if you could set it out in your garage and go work on stuff for 24 hours and come back and uh, your tools would be rust free but it's always going to be in the back of your head that you've got this concoction out in the garage that could blow up on it at any given moment all that stuff is just not enough reason to not do it uh, especially if you're just having fun but that's i still think things like vinegar or, or lemon juice or whatever um, all are they're safe and they're cheap and they don't require much work which is great if you're a person that has a machine shed full of old tools that you inherited like one commenter did regardless of all that i don't know which method works the best if you're curious and want to know more about the different methods i'd encourage you to go check out tubal kane's channel he actually has done a ton of testing on this including a series of videos called the rust olympics so i would go check him out for sure there were some great stories spread out in the comments sergeant stammel dipped his rusty m16 in boiling water during basic training and then the, he oiled it up afterward and that removed the rust uh, Donald had some nice pictures of a bike that he used vinegar on. Ford Sucks 2 had a good story. This video reminded me of back in high school when I was taking a shop class. I put a dirty gummed up carburetor in a hot tank to be cleaned. When I came back, it was gone. I assumed someone stole it. My teacher had the sad task of explaining the science of how it literally dissolved away. A lot of people said I looked like Quentin Tarantino and Jimmy from Pulp Fiction. A lot of people also asked what happened to my neck. There was a terrible lawnmower accident. I washed it on hot. Bandits took it. Those people that do the rings, I did the opposite of that. Actually, when I was younger, I had a long, beautiful, elegant neck. It was like a giraffe's. I could see things very far away. The problem was that when I needed to look at something that was in my hands, I couldn't focus on it. So they did the surgery and they took a couple inches too much off. You can't really complain when you're removing six feet of neck and you plus or minus a couple of inches. It happens. Finally, a lot of people were surprised by my spray can technique. I used my thumb instead of my index finger in the video. I honestly have never thought about it and now I wonder which one works better. Yeah, the index finger was easier. Thumb is fine, but you have more freedom of movement spraying with your index finger than you do with your thumb, it feels like. But both ways work. Thanks for watching.